Hey, it's Jeff. Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be completely hacking up my Global Green Pothos as it's looking a little bit rough in a couple areas. A few stems are actually losing its variegation as well. So I'm going to cut those back basically to the soil line to see if I can get that uh, uh, variegation back. Plus, I'm suspecting it is root bound. So um, I may actually just do a quick root prune on this. Don't worry because I do have an example plant of a uh, global, global uh, golden pothos that I recently did this with and it's got some pretty surprising results. I basically cut it back to the soil line. I did a really hard root prune and it responded really well. I wanted it to kind of regrow. So I took those cuttings um, and I'll be potting those up. I don't know if I'll do it in this video or not. Depends on how much time I have, but I'll show you the, uh, the uh, golden pothos, I'll show you the cuttings from it, and I'll show you exactly how to propagate a pothos plant if you've never done before. Don't be scared to prune. Pruning is really good for plants, especially if they're not just looking the greatest anymore. Hack it up. Um, plants, these plants respond really well. So let's get into it. So I'm going to start off with all the like highly variegated areas. And I'm just going to actually cut this back, like I said, right to the soil line. So I'm just gonna take my pruning shears, cut in between a node, something like that. So I have this section right here, which I'll set aside. I'm just gonna do the hard prune here first. So here's another stem. I'm just gonna cut it back to right here for now. now. I'm not saying every time you prune a plant, you should cut it back to the soil line. This is uh, a pretty hard prune, which I'm doing, but I'm doing it because I want the plant to regrow again. So uh, there's a couple little roots in here that are holding it down. I'm just going to cut those for now. So this is just obviously an extreme example of pruning, but if you have a pot that is really thin on top and you just don't know what to do with it, cut it back and it will regrow. So this is the section where there's not much variegation on these leaves. They're basically all green. So there's a small stem right here that I'm gonna cut back just like that. Okay, now for the stems that don't have much variegation, like it's just very, very light, uh, very faint. So this long stem, and who knows, maybe it didn't even have variegation to begin with, but let's see, some of these leaves up here, yeah, they don't have much variegation, so maybe they snuck in a couple regular pothos into this basket. So judging by this leaf that I just cut off, it does have some variegation, not much here. So I'm going to cut this one back right to the soil because at some point it did have variegation, but it lost it. Whether that is due to like the plant variegation being unstable or if it wasn't getting enough light, those are some reasons why it might have lost variegation. Okay, so here is what I'm left with, and I'm going to chop this up just a little bit more. And I'll show you my example plant here in a second. I'm just gonna, again, cut this right back to the soil. I'm gonna leave a few leaves on these stems. I just don't want the stems very long. The reason why I'm leaving some leaves on it is it has or gives the plant the ability to photo photosynthesize, pardon me, so that it can regenerate and regrow. Now I'm gonna show you how to propagate these so that you can make uh, single node cuttings or you can keep it as a, as a stem and propagate it in water. So obviously I have a section of stem like this, each portion of the stem has a leaf and you can see it has some little aerial roots as well. So this is where the new roots for the plant will come out from and then new growth will come from this node here as well. So I'm going to take some individual uh, node or leaf cuttings. So you cut in between two nodes and you get a section of the stem like this. Now I'm actually going to leave this portion of the stem on. You're not going to get any root development or anything like that. The reason why I'm leaving it a little bit longer is because uh, Matt from TechPlant, he did a, uh, like a propagation experiment um, with shorter um, nodes, I guess, or internodes and longer ones. And the longer ones or the, or the cuttings that had longer internodes actually produced um, better growth, I guess, over the, over the duration of his experiment. So um, you can cut them off, like you can cut these back, um, 
but I'm actually going to leave them this length. So I just go down the stem or up the stem, whatever, and just taking all these individual uh, node cuttings, individual leaf cuttings, and these will start their own entirely new stem. When you get a, a collection of cuttings like this and they all have their own new uh, growth or new stems, then you pot these up in a pot together and they will uh, make a nice full bushy pot of pothos. So that's what I'm going to do with this one. I'm going to put all these variegated cuttings in water and then the goal is to eventually just pot them all up together again and make an entirely new pot of these uh, global green pothos. If you don't want to take all those individual leaf cuttings and you just want this one stem to remain, you can cut off a couple of the lower leaves and then stick this portion in water, let it root, it'll get roots from the, uh, the nodes here, and then you can literally just stick it back in a pot of soil. But like I said, I'm, I'm taking or making a uh, larger bushy pot again, so I'm taking all of these cuttings as just individual leaf cuttings. Okay, I literally have a whole pile of single leaf cuttings. There's probably, I would guess, like 30 different cuttings. Here is that uh, golden pothos that I was telling you about. I basically did that hard prune. You can see it's branching out in a number of areas. So I made the prune right there. You can see there's a little branch coming through. And this one right here is kind of uh, surprising because it's getting three new branches. I made a prune right here. And you can see it's getting a branch there. It's got one right here. And then some back here as well. So it will eventually fill out into another full pot of pothos again. You can see it's already getting a few new leaves. They're just super green, super glossy. Where's that uh, newest one? Right here, this one's gorgeous. And I did do a really hard root prune. I basically cut off half of the root system and you can see it's just responding so well to uh, pruning. Here's an entirely new branch from a prune. So yeah, that's kind of an update with this one. This goes to show you that if you just literally hack up a plant, it responds really well. You're not gonna kill it. It, uh, it just keeps growing and keeps thriving. I just use filtered tap water for my propagation containers. And then you just literally stick the cuttings in just so that the nodes are underwater. You wanna make sure that the leaf is not underwater because it might rot. So yeah, just go around and stick all of these cuttings in. I'll show you the golden pulp cuttings that I have currently propagating in water as well, just so you can see uh, what to expect with the root and um, new stem development. Plus I'm going to stick all of those cuttings in a new pot of soil as well. So they definitely need to be potted up. So I'm just gonna stick all these cuttings in the water and they will be good to go. I never replace the water unless it's like really grimy. Otherwise I just top it up with fresh water but I don't need to replace it. I don't add fertilizer or anything like that. And you should start to see some pretty decent sized roots in a couple weeks. Okay, this table is full of pothos plants. So I got three containers of the global green, and then here are the golden pothos cuttings that I took off of that other plant. And I'm just gonna pull them out of the water just so you can see. Look at those roots and so the roots grow from those nodes, those aerial roots. And I don't know if you can see right here or not, but there is a small little growth point popping out from that node. Let's see if I can find a, a good growth point. Um, yeah, right here, here's a good one. So these are the roots, the aerial roots, and there is a new little growth point right there. So it will start to produce its own new vine. So I just sorted through all the cuttings and just picked out the ones that looked the healthiest. They didn't have any damage or anything on the leaves. If you hold it in your hand like this, it just ends up being a much easier planting experience. As uh, if you've ever planted multiple cuttings like this, then you know how much of a headache it can be. Okay, this is where it becomes a little bit difficult. I just added some soil into the bottom of the pot and I'm just going to stuff all of these cuttings in there like this. I'm just using a tropical plant mix and it does have some orchid bark in here. Typically, I wouldn't use this much bark, like just soil and perlite is good, but I only have one hand right now. So actually, I'm just gonna let that go. I'm gonna grab some tropical soil. So I'm just gonna add some soil quickly on the sides 
and then I'll get my hand out of the way. Just going to kind of tuck that down a little bit. Now that it is placed in the middle, just dumping it in. Just kind of pack it down, just so that all the roots are covered. Okay. You can adjust it a little bit better as you fill in the soil. I just don't want all these cuttings like falling out of the side of the pot. So I'm just gonna add a bunch of soil just on the sides here for now. I can, or you can, oh, let's see, a couple cuttings are just flopping out, just stuff them back in. Now the thing with water propagated plants, when you transition them to, or pot them up in soil, you have to make sure that you keep this soil relatively wet, pretty, pretty damp for about the first two weeks, as you don't want those water roots to dry out at all. Otherwise your plant will have a, a, a tough time recovering. It'll basically have to start a new root system if, the, if these uh, water roots dry out. Um, so yeah, that is looking pretty good actually. It usually takes a few times potting up multiple cuttings like this until you get pretty comfortable with uh, how to like position them properly without all the cuttings flopping out of the pot and that sort of thing. So this is my new like luscious full pot of golden pothos. I'm gonna give it some water. I'm just gonna soak the soil until it comes out the bottom of the drain hole. So this is how you can make an entirely new pot of pothos from existing cuttings uh, for free. I'm hoping to achieve this with these uh, global green pothos once they start to root. I'm gonna stuff them all in the pot like this and get a nice full bushy pot like this. So I think that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave it down below in the comment section. Thanks again for all the support. Thanks for watching my videos. Take care everyone, bye. Okay, so I was upstairs adding the uh, video files to my computer and I completely forgot that I was gonna take this out of the pot and take a look at the roots to see if it's root bound. Not bad, actually. So I'm just gonna take my knife and flip it up on its side and literally cut it like I'm cutting cake. So I'm just gonna slice right through this. Just like that. There, nice root cake. <laughs> it looks so funny like this. I just put in some soil in the bottom of the pot. This will allow these roots to search out into the soil and hopefully get this thing growing again. Okay, I'm just gonna push those down. If you need, you can add a little bit of soil on top. I think it looks good. It's at the right height. Now I'm gonna give it some water again. So, okay, now that's it. Got the, the root patty and the plant.